Hey everybody, it's King David checking in once again, and I'm back after about a two-month hiatus. I know I've been gone, I think I've been dealing with some things, and I'm still going through it, but I got the Lord on my side, so don't worry about it. I'm kind of in like a little transitional period right now, and uh, so I just broke up with my gear today, you know. For circumstances that I will not mention. Because I love her to death. I ain't got nothing against her. I'm not going to put her business nor my business out there for the whole world to see. But I will say this. It reminds me of these lessons that our pastor or preacher, whatever you want to call him, minister, has been teaching about the light and the darkness. Right? Light and darkness both have their purposes. Without the darkness, the light does not shine as hard. You see what I'm saying? You got like a white, you got a black canvas, you put white on top of it, the white pops out more. Right? So you need the darkness. But it's up to you to let that light shine. That light is God. There's a little speck of light in each and every one of our hearts. That God has placed there because that's a piece of him. We created in his image. He breathed the breath of life into us. We are God like creatures. God is in each and every one of us. So basically, since God is in each and every one of us, you know, the concept of heaven and hell is really a foolish one. That is propaganda that has been put in place by the Catholic Church. You know, centuries ago. Well, basically, the real heaven and the real hell are right here on earth. And what I mean by that is, you read what you sow, the golden rule, do unto others. Do good, good will come back to you. Do evil, evil will come back to you. See what I'm saying? You live by the sword, you die by the sword. <coughs> Excuse me. So, Basically, that situation and breaking up with my gear, it's kind of like, you know, you choose to do the wrong thing. You consistently choose to do the wrong thing. How many people do you know? Who consistently choose to do the wrong thing. Right? Even when. Look. I don't know if. You know. Uh, if I talked about this in my last video. But. The reason why I got to a relationship. Is because God blessed me with a great woman. But as great as that woman is. She can't get out of her own way. To let God work in her. God has blessed her with me. I'm a good man. Let me tell you I'm a good man. I will provide for my family. Nigga, I will work <clears throat> four or five jobs and catch the bus and walk 18 miles if that means providing for my family. I want to build a company or, 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 or a couple different companies for my family to be ordered to eat for my kids and my kids' kids. I'm talking about some real deal black empowerment shit for my black kids. You know what I'm saying? And I don't have no kids, but I want kids. So I know I'm a good ass dude. I've had my issues. You know what I'm saying? I have lived my life in darkness as well. And because of that, I wouldn't get no blessings. You know what I'm saying? Essentially, I was like the Israelites Walking around for 40 years until an entire generation died off because they had this stinking thinking, right? So I say this, God blessed me in a mighty way. He blessed us, blessed us tough, perfect. Everything was perfect. But unfortunately, she couldn't get out of her own way to let God's light shine in her. She continues to want to live in darkness. And if that's what she wants to do. Hey. Chunk.
We cool. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I ain't got no issues with her. I love her to death. But the truth is the truth. Like, damn. God bless you with everything. Everything. And it ain't just her. It's me. It's you. It's us. It's one of your relatives. It's one of your partners. How many people you know been blessed with everything? You got a wife, car, you got a house, you always want it. <coughs> Excuse me. Voice a little raspy. But God bless you with everything you ever wanted. Everything. The keys to the kingdom are in your hand. I don't understand why we don't understand that the keys of the kingdom are in your hands. God has given you the tools to do everything that you need to do. All you have to do is just walk through the door. You live your life in the light. Do what you're supposed to do. You know your purpose. You serve God like God calls you to. And your life will be extremely blessed. But how many of us can't get out of our own way to accept God's blessings? I know I'm not the only one. I've been there. You know how we do. Well, this job, cool, but... You know, this, 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 fuck this job. You know what I'm saying? I can't stand this old raggedy ass motherfucking job. I'm ready to leave up out of here. Okay, you coming with that attitude. You think God gonna bless you with another one? I've been there. My current job is cool. I like it. It don't pay nothing. And come to find out, there's other coworkers of mine who are getting paid more than me to do less than me. And every time I try to ask for a raise, there's always some excuse. You know how it is when you ask white man for a raise. Excuse me, Mr. White Man, um, I have been working in the cotton field for quite some time, and I would like a raise. Oh, okay, nigga, we're going to do an evaluation, and we're going to talk to this person, we're going to talk to that person, we're going to see about getting you a raise. I don't know if I can give it to you. I got to talk to these people. And you keep calling, and you keep calling, and you never get that raise. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? I could be disgruntled about that. I don't like it, but at the same time, I know it's not my final stop. I'm thankful to God for this job. It may not be the best job, but God has a better job out there for me. So I'm not going to complain about the job I have. It pays the bills. I'm going to do what I can with what the Lord blessed me with. When the Lord blessed you with a few things and you properly managed a few things, he will bless you even greater. And I know God going to bless me. That's why I'm not complaining about this job. I've learned my lesson, had a good job or at least a job, a decent job. And I'm ungrateful. God allows that job to be taken from me because I'm living in darkness. When you grumble about that job, when you grumble about this, when you grumble about that God going to let that job fall where it may. And, you know, I lost a couple jobs that way. I'm not going to lie. I've lost a couple cars that way. Not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Wanting to drive the car around back and forth to work. Instead of catching the bus for two or three days. Putting the car in the shop. And then being able to ride. That's why I ain't got no whip now. You know what I'm saying? Rushing. Being impatient. Buying this raggedy car. Buying that raggedy car, car break down, da da da. I got evicted from my place, family. I could have let that darkness spread into my heart. I could have said, you know what, F them landlord and her husband, F them people, F this apartment. I could have towed it up, I could have did all type of things. Because to be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the situation, family. I got behind on my rent. I lost my job. I know I talked about this. Lost my job for a month. Was working at a place, getting full-time hours, plus a little OT. Lost that one. Was down for a week. Found another job where I have been at till this day. But I was getting 65 hours because they was taking out for lunch. Even when I stopped taking lunch, that's still 70 hours. I'm now working 80 hours because I got a ride home because I... Don't have reliable transportation except for the bus. But what I did do, this goes back to the light. A partner of mine works right across the highway for a trucking company, makes good money. I'm talking about stupid money, like $20 an hour plus type money. Stupid money. I wanted that job, I prayed over that job. 
I wonder, I'm like, man, this is the answer to my prayers. This job will set me straight, set my family straight. And this is when me and my girl still finna get a place together. So I move out. I'm like, man, that'll set my family straight. That'll set me straight. Oh, I'm cool. I'm cool. I get this job. I'm gonna stop smoking weed. Y'all know me, family. I smoke weed. I smoke big weed. I love smoking weed. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But I handle my business. I pay my bills. Then I smoke the weed. But I was like, damn. I would start smoking weed if God blessed me with the job. And I did. I started smoking weed for about two weeks. Got my system completely clean. I was ready to piss. I'm ready. To, I hope they call me up for piss like a motherfucker. For piss like I ain't never pissed before so I can get this 20 hour job. It didn't work out. They didn't call me. Maybe for one reason, maybe for another. It doesn't matter. They didn't call me. But I put in my due diligence. I let my light shine. I stopped smoking. I did what I was supposed to do on my end. God did not bless me with that job. But as a result, God blessed me with 80 hours at my current job. So now, instead of getting 70 hours, I'm getting 80 hours. That's what I'm talking about, family. Do what you're supposed to do. Handle your business. Do the right things. Live a righteous life. Nobody's saying that you're not going to trip, skip, fumble. Nobody's saying that you're not going to mess up. You know what I'm saying? But the fact of the matter is, you're trying. You are trying. God knows we're not going to get it completely right. He knows. But the option is always there for you to come to the light. It don't matter if you're a mass murderer, a multi-murderer, a rapist. God will always give you a chance to leave that darkness and come into the light. Let that light shine. If you are in a dark room and you see one little bitty pinhole of sunlight, that's the light. That's the light inside of you. Your soul is dark. Your soul is black. Your soul is in a hellish place. And thus, you live in a hell on earth. I may not have everything, family. I lost my apartment. Like I say, I'm staying at the church. Been staying here since what? The end of December? No. November. Since about the middle part of November, I'm living at the church. It's only temporary. I really feel to leave up out of here. But I could complain and say, damn, you know, I wish I had my house. All my stuff is in storage. I'm paying storage unit fees. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But I say, you know what? I'm thankful because I could completely be homeless. I could be sleeping out on these streets. It's cold. It's raining. It snowed once. It overall, it's been warm, but it's probably like 40-something degrees outside. That's pretty cold. Sleeping out in the cold and everything. I could be ungrateful. I really could, but I'm thankful that I have a warm place to stay. And because of that, I can now spend more time working around the church cleaning and pulling trash and doing worship services and, and things of that nature. So, yes, I could complain about the fact that I don't have a car or I no longer have a girlfriend or I no longer have this and I no longer have that. But the thing is, God has already blessed me with everything that I have ever needed. He gave me the breath of life. His son died for my sins and I had the Holy Spirit. It's not that bad because I know it's going to get better. The Lord allowed me to be here so I can have a safe place to stay. You see what I'm saying? You know, you, you know that song. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, yeah, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Oh, yeah, you got to let your light shine. Hiding under a bushel, no. I'm going to let it shine. Let your light shine. When you let your light shine, God will most assuredly bless you. Just because you don't get this one thing that you wanted over here, when one door closes, another one opens. That was not meant for you. I know that job at Estes was not meant for me. That's why I wasn't mad about not getting the job. But I know... As long as I do what I'm supposed to do, continue to work around the church, continue to let my light shine, continue to be 
a strong man, a strong black man, a strong man of God. God will bless me and the rest will just come to me. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a minor setback for a major comeback. And to be honest, I was drowning in the rent. And, you know, I don't want to go into that whole situation. But the way they acted and carrying on, I was just like, hey, here, you can have these keys. I don't want it. You can have this apartment. It's not that serious. It's not. I had already become emotionally detached. It was cool. Now, as soon as I get my little money up, next couple checks, I'm going to find me another apartment. And I'm going to move. And I'll be back on my own. And then by income tax time, hopefully I'll be able to buy a car. You know what I'm saying? Like a truck that I can drive, make some payments on, something reasonable that I can go out and try to find maybe a better job or go to school. I do want to go to school, be a cosmetologist, me and her, women hair, locks, dress, twists, weave, whatever. I want to do it all. But we'll see. You know what I'm saying? But I got to have some transportation. Then once I get some transportation, hopefully I can find me a better job. Because all the jobs in St. Louis, fam, you got to drive to. Ain't no buses go out to the good jobs. And if they do, they only run certain times. And if they want you to work till 12 and the bus not running at 11, nigga, you stuck. You can't take that shift or you got to stay till about 5 or 6 in the morning till the next bus comes. That's all I'm saying, family. That's all I'm saying. Let your light shine. Let God shine in you. Quit living in darkness, family. Quit living in darkness. That darkness will be a hell on this earth. You wonder why your car acting the way it do. You wonder why your relationships are the way they are. You wonder why this and you wonder why that. And you steady on your knees praying to God, asking him for answers. And you already know the answer because you are living in darkness. When you live in darkness, you reap what you sow. When you reap darkness, you sow darkness, you're going to reap darkness. You sow light, you're going to reap light. And that's all I got to say, family. So, with that being said, hey, I'm going to say it again one more time before I get up out of here. Let your light shine. No matter the circumstance, let your light shine. That's all I got to say. Thanks for, you know, thanks for listening to the kid. I know it's been a while. You know what I'm saying? I ain't going nowhere. I just been going through my little situation. You know what I'm saying? I really had the mindset to do these videos. But in a lot of recent events... In my personal life, it made me do this video. So, I mean, feel free to check out the rest of my videos. You know, YouTube.com backslash C backslash King David 314. Google Plus King David 314. Twitter, Instagram, fly till I die. F-L-Y-T-I-L-L-D-I-E. Holla at me. Peace.